When we first had the idea to make an opera together, and this would be the librettist Eric Ann and I, it was 20 years ago, and we were thinking a traditional opera. What was innovative then is still innovative now. The subject matter was, was innovative, which was we wanted to make an opera about a teenage girl whose story would be modeled on actual teenage girls' personal histories from hundreds of years of Western history. So these girls had some kind of visionary experiences that caused them to be separated from society somehow by groups of doctors or priests, you know, who decided that they were witches or they could name witches or they were hysterics. So for some reason or another, because of their visionary experiences and what they purported to see in these experiences, they got separated out from society and put in some different place. It goes as far as this sometimes. So that was the story. And then 20 years later, when we started working with director Charles Adi and, uh, and KCET, we actually started to imagine uh, with this medium of episodic television, what it might be like to make this opera into an actual series. We were talking about how we might want to do the show and figure out a way to bring it to the public. And trying to produce a new opera and just doing it traditionally on a stage was going to be crazy. You know, opera is a wonderful medium and we love it, but it is also a tradition-bound medium that has been the same for a long, 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 long time. Scene one, take two. Shout it out loud, Brian. Yes, sir. Does this first day open or close? Close. I was talking to them about the idea of how, you know, a niche audience for modern opera. If you look globally, it's huge, right? There are a lot of people. If you try and get everybody into one room to see it in one city at one time, you're going to have a really tough time. And I had been, you know, working both as a theater person and as a filmmaker and said, why don't we shoot it? And action! <laughs> Project because of the fact that we've taken what's thought of as a traditional live entertainment opera and turned it into a mediated piece of work and really used film to its advantage. We've really shot it as a piece of film as opposed to finding an opera, staging it on a stage, and then shooting that with three or four cameras. This is all really done in a way that puts you in the opera, hopefully, by using a single camera, specifically designed, lit, and performed for camera as opposed to you know a live show that was then just as a second thought filmed. This is conceived from the beginning as a piece of film. The fact that we're shooting it episodically means that we're able to really spend attention to detail, character twists, have you noticed any change? Different musicians, new locations, the cast remains the same and we get to bring them into all these different environments. Instead of just mounting an opera on a big stage that's pretending to be a prison, that's pretending yes. to be you know, a farm, I mean, we just shoot it there. Every time we do another shoot in a new location, we're not also working with the same orchestra. We're changing up the location, we're changing up the musicians. Like here we have a local group of singers who sing with this group Capella SF and they're in the San Francisco Symphony Chorus. And then we also have a string quartet here that's different. We had the Kronos Quartet, now we have an Acme String Quartet. Um, different performers every time. We had a marching band in episode five. It means that from the point of view of the musician's side, we're creating a, a huge community of artists that have been involved with this project, right? Hundreds of people that will have been in an episode because we can have them participate because of their relationship to the location where we're shooting. So that's powerful. Virio, at this point in the story, 
you know, she's gotten sent to boarding school, she's gotten sent to a convent, they've had doctors investigating her, and then eventually in episode nine, which we're shooting here, she gets thrown in jail, and it just came up. We're like, you know, we should shoot that scene on Alcatraz. I wrote the music for this episode. You know, some of it was sketched out 20 years ago. The aria that Virio sings in her cell was probably the very, very first thing I wrote for this entire project. I mean, I've reworked it, but when Eric and I first had the idea to make an opera on this subject, long before we knew it was going to take this form, right? We had this sort of first experience with it. And, and of the entire libretto, that aria that she sings in jail so moved me that it's the first music I wrote. And that's what we're shooting here tonight. for Virio are that it's received extremely well by the audiences and maybe not now but later on down the line it gets recognized as one of those groundbreaking projects something that made a difference in the artistic world and that's visual arts that's performing arts that's music opera <laughs> What's been a big challenge, I mean, a unique component of this is fundraising for such a project because people haven't experienced this yet. They don't understand how it's going to unfold as a television show until you really have a product to show them. Here we go. Virio, say Virio. Virio! There's a love and a passion in this project, and I think you know, 20, 30, 40 years down the line, hopefully this is referenced as one of those projects that was groundbreaking and changed what opera is. <laughs>